Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Regime to the Com video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news stories, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. And we're going to be starting things out with Seagate, specifically the multi-actuator technology, which the company are touting to be a performance breakthrough. They are claiming that it will double the performance of a hard drive by allowing data to be read or written in parallel. We'll get to that in a moment. And then we'll finish the video with AMD's and Navi. Specifically, the new graphics architecture has already made its debut in drivers. So we'll go into those details as well as a quick overview of what Navi probably will look like. So first things first, we'll start out with Seagate, and the company are, of course, boasting that their technology is pretty spiffy. Now, obviously, capacity is important, after all. If it wasn't, we'd still be on, like, 100 megabyte drives, but it's not just the fact that you need higher capacity drives. Obviously, as storage sizes increase, the need to transfer data faster becomes increasingly important. So, to this end... Seagate have unveiled its multi-actuator technology. So, what is an actuator? Well, it's the component that moves over the drive's head over the surface media, and this, of course, is to allow the reading and writing of data. Today's hard drives are equipped, are equipped excuse me, with a single actuator. Now, this moves the read and write heads together in synchronous motion. I'm going to read this part from their blog, Verbatim. In its first generation, Seagate's multi-actuator technology will equip hard drives with dual actuators, two actuators, with two actuators operating on a single pivot point. Each actuator will control half of the drive's arms. Half of the drive's recording heads will operate together as a unit, while the other half will operate independently as a separate unit. This enables a hard drive to double its performance while maintaining the same capacity of a single actuator drive. Now, the important part, according to James Burden, who is the principal uh, product strategist over at Seagate, that their actual technology is still going to adhere to current standards. So, in other words, it will still be plug and play. You won't need to configure anything or mess around with new drivers or anything like that. It will simply work. The word parallelism has become a pretty buzzwordy for lack of a better word, term in computing. And we've especially heard it in the next generation of consoles, but really it's been, well, pretty much part and parcel of computing for some time. In parallelism, in a nutshell, is the idea of sending multiple operation requests simultaneously to the device. Typically, we refer to this in, let's say, processors. And technically, parallelism in hard drives is kind of already a thing. I mean, after all, that's why you can have RAID rows. Obviously, I'm simplifying slightly. I'm going to once again read this verbatim uh, from their blog, so there's no room for misinterpretation on my part. Seagate's new multi-actuation technology is a way to put the performance of parallelism within a single hard drive unit. The host computer can treat a single actuated drive as if it were two separate drives. This means that the host computer can ask a single high-capacity drive to retrieve two different data requests simultaneously, delivering twice the performance as a as fast compared to a single actuator drive, end quote. James Burden also gives one final quote. Basically, we're taking the high-capacity hard drive a customer already needs and expects and magically doubling the IOPS the customer gets from it, with no downside, end quote. Now, currently this technology is primarily going to be aimed at server farms. However, Obviously, while it's going to certainly be very useful in the data center, for obvious reasons, when we're talking about virtual machines and, you know, the idea of multiple clients on the same system, so obviously IOPS and basically bandwidth, storage bandwidth is incredibly important, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a trickle-down of this technology start to make its way into regular customer drives in not too long in the future at all. Well, of course, the fastest way to... Uh, put together a computer with huge amounts of storage bandwidth right now is one of the SSD technologies. However, they are not cheap, particularly when you're dealing with a drive for the data center where potentially you could have hundreds of gigabytes of files, even, for example, video content. For example, imagine YouTube servers. But also think of something customer-related. You and I, retail... Imagine the size of games now. I think it was Forza 
just the recent Forza was like almost 100 gigs or about 100 gigabytes of data. And obviously, faster um, transfer times are incredibly important. Of course, the very fact of the matter that the hard drive, from what we're understanding here, does seem to operate as two separate drives, that could be a bit of a, a bit of an issue. But the very fact of the matter is, I know an awful lot of people who do a lot of virtual machine work, 3D work, video encoding, that type of uh, workload, and these type of drives would be incredibly beneficial to their workflow. Anyway, uh, next piece of news, and this one is AMD's Navi, which you may know be the successor to Vega, and it's codenamed GFX10, with GFX9 being Vega. So, there is a string in the latest Linux driver, which was spotted by Computerbase, and it's rather interesting. New underscore graphics dot gfx10 dot mm super secret, super underscore secret, may I add, dot enable, and then uh, it's got, you know, uh, parentheses zero colon zero. <laughs> I love the fact that it's super secret. I mean, that's, that, that, that's, just, that's just great. I love it. Now, obviously, right there and then, you would see the real name of a graphics uh, processor, but AMD are probably trying to avoid generating hype for the architecture, because it's looking like it's not going to be on store shelves, and I wouldn't be surprised, to be honest, if A, we see delays, or B, it's a paper launch, or C, like Vega, it's going to have shortages. But anyway, the, the touted release date is late 2018, which, to be honest, makes a lot of sense. After all, we've not seen that many leaks on this at the moment. Now, what we do know about Navi is somewhat limited. The first thing is that it will be a 7nm architecture. That's been confirmed by a roadmap slide that popped out. It looks like Vega is going to be built on uh, 14nm plus, or possibly, uh, by the way, the I refer, just to clarify, to the Vega refresh, which is being touted but not 100% confirmed. It's possibly going to be built on 12nm, or it's going to be built on 14nm+. plus. It's not 100% confirmed yet when that's going to happen, if it's even released next year. But anyway, uh, with Navi, it's going to be 7nm, and what they have said, it's going to have next-generation memory. Realistically, there's not exactly going to be, you know, the memory types from, you know, the planet Krypton suddenly transports to Earth. So, in reality, and this is a new memory uh, architecture that's being created that we're not aware of, probably not, it's either going to be HBM3 or GDDR6, with a very slight possibility of GDDR5, uh, X, but I, I suspect most, uh, at that point, most of the industry is going to have started to migrate to GDDR6, and also HBM3. Obviously, the cost and production uh, volumes of HPM3 in particular are going to be rather interesting. And don't forget, just recently, there was that uh, other news story that popped up from AMD that said that uh, one of their engineers, I believe it was on LinkedIn, they had uh, accidentally revealed that they had been working on a GDDR6 memory controller for the next generation of graphics chips. But let's face it, that's not particularly surprising. The very fact of the matter is, of course... AMD want to utilize GDDR6 for some of its graphics chips. That's just pretty much stating the obvious at this point because HBM3 is going to be expensive. Like It's one of the issues with Vega. Um, quite simply, it's not that Vega is a bad chip. It's just that HBM2, uh, in this instance, has been very expensive to procure in you know pretty much any volume. But getting it in large volumes has been absolutely a nightmare for AMD, and it's one of the reasons that we've seen such limited quantities of Vega. And also the whole production issues with uh, HBM2 have also meant you have had some of these issues with the custom cards, and it's one of the reasons that AMD are no longer putting a, uh, you know, a focus on the reference cooler models, and instead trying to siphon those GPUs, siphon that silicon towards the custom cards. And in fact, we've just seen a myriad of these things being launched. I mean, Sapphire just released the RX Vega 56 Nitro Plus. That's a bit of a name, isn't it? Um, and obviously, once again, that's using the Vega 56 chip. But the power requirements for this thing are absolutely just bonkers. I seem to remember it has like three 8-pin power connectors. And the, the power consumption, I think, was something like 500 watts. And the performance was pretty impressive, but... 
it's kind of hard for me to argue. Um, if you're looking from a pure gaming standpoint anyway, and you don't need the compute performance, it's very hard for me to argue the benefits of a Vega chip if you need, like, you know, to factor in low power consumption. If you're doing mining, or once again you need high-end compute performance, then Vega is absolutely amazing. And it's nice to see that AMD are back into it. However, I think that a more basic Vega reference model or, you know, something like that, if you could get it cheap enough it's a pretty good deal but at the moment the prices are just absolutely weird but anyway that's going slightly off topic anyway i think that's just about it for this particular video hopefully you found it somewhat informative useful fun i don't know something but with all of that said take care of yourselves bye for now